In this video, traders, we're gonna look at the biggest risk to the market. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so this is my opinion, and this is based on several years of experience that I trained in 2001, had lots of experience watching the market move literally tick by tick by tick by tick for many, many years. Still, that's kind of my bread and butter kind of stuff. I don't trade as actively, I don't sit at the chair every single day, all day, every day, but I'm still very much focused on short-term price action, as you guys will know, but, the one thing I've noticed, and I've seen this, we've seen this with the flash crash, we've seen it with many flash crashes, is there's something out there which is the biggest risk to the market bar anything in my opinion. Now, people, we have news coming and go. We have news coming in about a trade war. We have news coming in about a real war. We have news coming in about some economic crisis. We have news coming in about slowing growth. We have news coming in recession. We have this, we have that. And markets will ebb and flow and back and forth. And yes, we may well get bear markets. We may well get bull markets. We may well get swinging movements. Now, unless you are a buy and hold investor, as a trader, day trader, swing trader, it doesn't really matter where the market goes. We're just trying to pick a direction over the time frame we're trading, right? We're looking for a three month direction, we try and pick that. Looking for a three hour direction, we try and pick that. Now, generally speaking, bear markets have a different characteristic than bull markets, that's a different topic. So where's the biggest risk, in my opinion, for the market in terms of out of nowhere, where we can see panic? Now, we've seen this before with the flash crash, okay? If we remember the flash crash, and there was a lot of good things going around, and we had that Sario being blamed, I've done a video on him before, about how he was spoofing the market, but there's one commonality that you see, and I've seen with my own eyes on individual stocks as well. I've traded through bear markets, and I've been watching stocks exhibit this. I've traded through the flash crash as well, that was super interesting. I've seen this happen. And the one thing, the biggest risk, guys, is when liquidity just gets yanked out of the market. That causes absolute chaos because it doesn't matter about anything else. If you haven't got someone to sell something to you that you need to sell, you are gonna take whatever price you can. And the reason liquidity gets pulled out of the market is because no one wants to stand in the way and it's all automated now. Now listen, I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming algos, I'm not putting the blame on anybody. This is not a blame game, this is liquidity pointing the finger and saying watch out for this because we see this almost weekly and we will see it if we're not careful on a bigger scale because of the way the whole thing works. So let me explain. So what I mean by weekly, or maybe not that's quite so weekly, but a regular basis, we have data coming out, important data, interest rate announcements, non-farm payrolls, etc. If you were to watch the order book before that, you'll see that nobody wants to be have their orders in the order book, or very few people, of course there's orders still there, but a lot of people pull liquidity out because they don't want to be on the wrong side of a news flow. They just wanna pull their orders out. When people are unsure of direction or of volatility or of what the market is doing, no one wants to commit any money. It's human nature, right? Now that is whether you are a person manually putting in orders or you're an algo that's been programmed by a person. The algo will be programmed to say, in this unsure environment, pull all orders because we need to look and take stock and see what's going on. We don't want to put money at risk under these conditions. And so it doesn't matter if it's a human or it's an algo, it's still capital preservation mode because we don't know what's going on. So we see this weekly. Now, if we extrapolate that out into bigger time frames and we see stuff going on that we don't like, then nobody is going to want to step in front. Nobody's going to want to provide liquidity. Everyone's going to want to wait because the only advantage you have of placing orders in the order book at that moment in time is that you're catching the price as it comes to you. Now, once that advantage is gone, you can buy the price, whatever. If the market goes through, you can still hit the market and get a better price or the same price. So you're not really having that much of an advantage by doing that. And so the advantage then disappears when everything is in chaos. And so even the market's in free fall or the market's rallying, not necessarily them rallying, more like free fall because people are losing money. Generally speaking, on a broad scale, if you were to a kind of survey a million people, most people would be losing money because they're long 
uh, most of the time in the market. So falling prices, people are pulling liquidity. And what happens with that is that there's no, no sellers. I've seen examples, guys, and I'd say over a dozen times, especially when you're watching UK shares, the level two data, for whatever reason, the price is getting hammered. And I've seen instances where you've had literally two bids on a stock that's got a ridiculous market cap in the billions, you know, just two bids. And of course, there are circuit breakers that kick in and someone just has to sell whatever price, gets a crazy price. Price, the circuit breaker kicks in, it doesn't fill, and it kind of tries to sort itself out. But again, you know, it goes down another wave because people just can't sell it. If you've got 10,000 shares here, 20,000 here, 30,000, 5,000, 2,000, and someone wants to sell 100,000, you're not going to get filled. And so, yes, that's an extreme example of an individual share, but we saw a little bit of that in the flash crash. Liquidity was drying up, and everybody was saying, I don't know what's going on here. Either you've got people who want to get short, traders like us, or like this is opportunity, let's sell, let's sell, let's sell. Or we're having people saying, let's get out of our longs, we're stuck in longs, sell, sell, sell. But on the flip side of it, you didn't have people soaking up that sell. That's the key. It doesn't matter how many people sell, but if you've got enough bias to soak that up, it won't make too much of an impact. You'll have an orderly decline, like we get in any normal day in the market. An orderly decline might be quite a heavy day, but it's still reasonably orderly. It's not just suddenly repping through the floor. When we get these ripped through the floor, and we get these kind of just literal trap doors, is because we've got a lot of people who are urgently trying to get out of a position they can't get out of and liquidity is not there. Even to the long side, guys, we've seen a lot of people who are short on the commodities like natural gas spiked up dr dramatically, again, because there's no liquidity there to soak up the amount of volume that's coming in. There's such a rush of orders that have urgency to them because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of what's happening. Uh, I, I, I want to get out of this position. I'm losing money. Every time I look at it, it's losing money. The firm's at risk. I'm at risk. This person's at risk. My investors are at risk. I need to get out of the door now, 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 now. I don't care what price it is. You get many people doing that, but not a lot of people prepared to step in the way of it because there's no advantage to doing that anymore, especially with algos that can come in and out quickly. It's like, pull everything, now put it all back in, pull everything. It's not like you're manually having to reduce, pull stuff in and out. So it's very easy just to go bang, pull liquidity out. Everyone wants to get out of a door and there's no door at the door opening so small. All of a sudden it just breaks. Yes, we've got circuit breakers, but if you look on some of the broader markets, circuit breakers are massive. They're not really there to stop you, uh, stop anything, guys. We might get it in individual shares when they're moving and they do kick in. Uh, more more frequently with some of the smaller shares when they're ripping up and down and circuit breakers are there for a reason. But we're talking about a broad market here. You know, circuit breakers are very, 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 very wide. And so as we saw in the flash crash, you can see thousand, down a thousand on the Dow. And yes, we pull back and that possibly is the likely scenario in most cases, but how far will it go? And this is the, the same as the biggest risk, guys, is that it's liquidity. It's not controlled systematic selling because that's an easier thing to trade. You can understand that, you can see it, you can see, yes, supply demand is definitely tilting one direction, selling a pullback here, oh, it's a rally, it's failed, let me get short on that, oh, it's a spike lower, a flush lower, let me get long, etc., etc. A flash crash is very, very volatile. Liquidity going, you don't know, and also get the liquidity vacuum. So when you get a sweep lower, if circuit breakers aren't triggered, can sweep back up again. So it's challenging to trade as well. So in my opinion, guys, the biggest risk to the market at the moment is the change in liquidity. So it's going from very thick to very thin very, very quickly. Because again, people don't want to commit when they don't understand what's going on. Of course, everyone just pulls money out. I'm not gonna put money at risk. So we get that liquidity coming out. And if you combine it with people, you've gotta get out now because there's a lot of things on the line, not just because the trades are a loss, but because the company might go down the pan, the hedge fund might be, go down the pan, individuals might start getting uh, going bankrupt. All this stuff that means that I've got to get out now, I don't care if I take a substantial loss, it saves the company. If you get a lot of those people and the liquidity vacuum, you get that perfect storm. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Um, just be warned. I think that's the biggest risk to the market. If you agree, let me know thoughts in the comments section below. If you don't, what do you think the biggest risk to the market is? I'd love to hear your opinion. Comments in the comments section below. Take care. Bye-bye.